381 rushing yards for Carson Newman, and yet not enough to win in regulation. 179 from Oliver and a touchdown. 30 points in the fourth quarter. A championship game record. And Miles brought him back time after time. 240 yards he has thrown for since halftime. Now they had less than 60 total yards at the half. So now Guyton and Carson Newman on the first possession of overtime and in and out of the hands of Quiz Rump. If you're Ken Sparks, how in the world do you get your team reignited? How do you get him to forget about blowing a 15-point lead in the last four minutes? Well, I think you do just what he did. He got up in their face with enthusiasm, urging them to go back, play the football game, put the game, put the pass out of their minds. It's a brand-new football game. Nice play call, but a drop ball by Ruff on the first play from Trimble. So the option, Refor, who left earlier briefly with the turned ankle. And this turns into a gain of about four. Greg Bonnet made the tackle, third and six coming. Northwest Missouri State has a, I think, monumental edge in the kicking game, in the person of their kicker, in the person of their kicker, Purnell, assuming that the injury to him on the extra point was not bad. Ryan Fleming, on the other hand, only had three for eight field goals coming into this game. Made one today, made his career best today, but Purnell is a big leader. If it should come to the kicking game. Four wide. Oliver is the setback and complete and struggling for first down yardage and getting there was Quez Rump, so he makes up for his first down drop. And right there in Quez Rump, you see all the ingredients of what's gone into this game. Courage, running into the middle, catching the ball, concentration, skill, hand-eye coordination, and flat-out determination. And the beat goes on. Guyton, pitch, fumbled, and still out there, recovered by Northwest Missouri State. The last six years, Carson Newman has lost to the eventual national champion. Ryan Miller falls on that ball, and with the kicking game that we just talked about, the advantage, the huge advantage, now swings to Northwest Missouri State. Fumbles have cost Carson Newman each of the last two championship opportunities, and now they stare at the specter of that happening again. That's their only lost fumble today. It might be the only chance they get to lose a fumble. A lot of times, rematches are disappointments. They don't live up to the original. This one has far surpassed last year. Bearcats take over. They start with the give up the middle to David Jansen. Four yard, maybe two. I would expect they will be conservative here, but they can't be so conservative that they put too much pressure. Now the kicker is perfectly capable of kicking, Purnell is perfectly capable of kicking the thing from here, which would be a 41 yarder. Yeah, his longest is here 48. He's already in field goal. Yeah, range. and that thing went through the top of the uprights. I saw it on film. Jansen. With the sweep and inside the 20, it'll be third and three or four. Bearcats won this matchup on this very field a year ago, 24-6. In miserable, rainy conditions, we've got perfect conditions, and the uh, two teams matching the perfect conditions with a memorable 44-44 regulation. 34th quarter points needed by the Bearcats to get this far, and... They're looking at third and five and maybe looking to just position the ball in the middle of the field this time. Jansen, not quite to the middle, but he gets inside that hash mark. And now here comes, for David Purnell, a chance for Northwest Missouri State to repeat a national championship. And we joked about 
the possibility that they would tape an aspirin on his ankle, but I don't think that ankle's bothering him at all right now. He's not limping. Adrenaline does an awful lot in a situation like this. He is an outstanding kicker, and if he's well protected and if the mechanics go well with the snap in the hole, he ought to make this thing. Jeff LeBlanc, the holder, T.J. Sheklock, the snapper. It is up, and no good. No good. And like I said, the beat goes on. It doesn't matter how great the kicker is. He's still got to make it under pressure. Fans wearing green and white had already raced onto the field. But he hooked it, and we're still going in Florence. Even as a kid, you love to add accessories to your vehicle. Today, you go to Z-Bart for their huge selection of brand name car and truck accessories. Pop your top with a new sunroof from only $189.95. Our remote alarm from $169.95. Get our spray on bed liner now from only $299. For over 35 years, Z-Bart, survival gear for cars and trucks. At the moment, the loneliest man in the state of Alabama, David Purnell, who hooked the 36-yard championship-winning kick. Now the second overtime begins, and a flag at the end of the option pitch, which Jansen took for a couple of yards. Holding offense. As Purnell lined that one up. As we look at Hill, call for the hold right there. As Purnell lined that one up, everybody on his sideline expected only the best. And they were, they were already out on the field to celebrate. One problem, kick was wide left. I have seen that happen to the greatest kickers in the history of the National Football League under pressure. Purnell is a superb kicker. One would expect him to make that. But since he didn't, now he's got to put it out of his mind. And right now, he's got to hope, along with the rest of his team, they can overcome this huge holding penalty on J.R. Hill. Uh, Gary Anderson, Minnesota Vikings, doesn't miss it. Kick all last year until the one to clinch the NFC title game. It does happen to every one of them. In and out of the hands of Tony Miles. Perfectly timed to hit that time by Charlie Walker. He's made a couple of big plays. Two of the biggest plays in the game have been made by Charlie in the area that is most difficult for a defensive back. Defensive backs have to change directions, arrive at the point with the football at exactly the right instant, and they have to make decisions in a millisecond. Good job by Charlie again. And the clear advantage because of the holding call now rest with Carson Newman. Back and forth, the momentum ebbs and flows. Way too many swings to count now. Second and 20, Miles incomplete. Oh, he just missed that one. He had plenty of time. Went for J.R. Hill. Yeah, one of the heroes of the comeback. Good job for protecting. That offensive line just fine. And he just short-armed it. Let the elbow drop down, in which case the ball tends to fly, and it took off on him. Coaches are over there screaming, trying to get a timeout called. Good decision. Unlike at the end of regulation, it's Churchma who has to pump his team back up after the letdown of the missed field goal, the not missed only, opportunity. Yeah, not only his team, he's got to get Purnell. Somebody's got to be with Purnell right now saying, look, shake it off, shake it off, man. You're going to have to go back out there and win this game for us, and you will do it. That's what you do at a time like this. BBA bowling coming up next. Well, nobody's with him. They're just leaving him to his own thoughts and his own warm-up routine. Well, I don't think that's good. Somebody needs to be talking to it. 
easily one of the best kickers in Division II. Really some of the best numbers uh, in any level of college football this year. He was 18 out of 25 on the season. Didn't miss a PAT. Still hasn't all season long. Exuberant, positive attitude. His teammates love him. All kind of good things. <laughs> he still didn't make that kick, David. I remember Jan Stenerud, the Kansas City Chiefs, and he went on to become at his in his era the greatest kicker of all time he missed a big one in the overtime or it led to overtime against the Dolphins. third and 20 hill in motion caught by Seneca home inside the 30 and they're coming on the field once again will be Purnell this is going to be a much longer kick. This will be right at about 45 yards. 45 and from a tough angle for a right-footed kicker. The right-footed kicker tends to hook the ball to the left more so from this hash for some reason. A little bit more difficult, but again, well within his range. 70% between 40 and 49 this year. Very makeable kick for Purnell, but it's blocked. Never got that one off the ground. It's an awful lot to ask of a young man. He simply couldn't get it back together after the first one. He kicked that one low into the line. He very wisely fell on the ball. Now, if, if Carson Newman picks that up and runs for a touchdown, the game is over. So he stayed in the game enough to go get on the football, but he did not get it up in his normal fashion. He didn't hit the ball well. Chris Butler comes in with the block to add to his day, which already included two interceptions. So now Leonard Guyton and the Carson Newman offense needed a score to win their first Division II championship. Start with a plunge up the middle by Oliver. After all that offense in the fourth quarter, 30 points by Northwest Missouri State alone. Nobody scored in the second overtime. Oh, and there's some smashing going on down there. Wes Simmons made a big hit there. And you, when you hit that guy, Oliver, uh, you're the one that reverberates. You can tell Wes had a bad shoulder, but he's staying in this football game. Second and eight. Guiding for Oliver. Down to the 17 where it will be third and two. Yeah, and now the focus shifts to Ryan Fleming, number 18, the place kicker for Carson Newman, who had his career long today. I think it was a 38-yarder. He has not had a lot of success with long field goals, but he's down in a situation where if they don't make this first, he'll probably get a chance to win the game. It was his season longest, his career best, 43. They'd like to get him quite a bit closer. Oliver is going to be real close. Lean backward, did everything he could to stretch to the 15. Let's see if we got there. I don't think they're going to give him the 15. Brian Schertz, number 90, in there, scrapping and fighting, keeping his pads down, making a hit on the fine running back. And this is a tough decision here, fourth and this short. You'd really love to go make the first down. But it's right in the middle of the field. It's a 20, it's a 32-yarder, and they're going to get Fleming out there. Fleming ought to make this. College kicker is capable of this, but there's so, so much pressure on these youngsters. Only three of eight coming in. He hit his only kick earlier from 38. For the championship, 32 yards. And he hooked it. How much more is this can they take? We are still scoreless as we head to triple overtime. Purnell hooked a chance to win, and Fleming matches him.
has it that this New Year's Eve is going to be a little, well, different. So you might be glad to know that the men's warehouse sells wool tuxedos for as little as $200. Just in case you want to dress up more than usual. After all, a millennium only happens once every thousand years. And chances are you don't want to wait till the next one. 100% wool, Y2K outfits, available at the men's warehouse. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. 1-800-776-SUIT. Casey Collectibles has a large selection of all your favorite collectibles, such as Boyd's Bears, Harmony Kingdom, Swarovski Crystal, Ebony Visions, Hummel, plus Walt Disney Classics, and many more. Our friendly, knowledgeable salespeople will be happy to help you with all of your shopping needs. After just one visit, Casey Collectibles will be your favorite collectible store. Casey Collectibles and Gifts, just east of I-29 and Barry Road in the Boardwalk Shopping Center, 741-2448. Well, about four hours ago, this Division II Championship uh, began under bright, warm, sunny conditions. Gun Sparks' mood isn't exactly sunny right now after missing... That uh, potential game winner by Fleming, and on the other side, Churchman knows the feeling. So we head to triple overtime. It begins with Guyton keeping for three. Each team wasting a chance with a very makeable field goal. Brunell in the first overtime after an Oliver fumble. Left. Carson Newman scoreless. Eagles unable to take advantage of their chance. And so they have it first here in the third extra period. You think, Dave, maybe we ought to order in dinner here? We could be here for a while. Guyton, the other way. Makes that pitch, kept it to the 16, where it will be third and one, maybe a little less than one. First overtime in a Division II championship. People here will not soon forget what it took for the Bearcats to get here. 44-29 with under four minutes in regulation. They trail. Runs through the middle, good for the first down by Oliver. They got a touchdown and two-point conversion in the final 10 seconds of regulation when all Carson Newman had to do with 57 seconds to go was run out the clock. They ran out of bounds instead. They had a procedure penalty Turn a fourth and two into a fourth and seven. Northwest Missouri State drove 74 yards to force the overtime, and we're stuck on 44. That is for Rumpf and incomplete. Oh, he had it too. Rump had very loose coverage from Carlson. Carlson was too far off Rump. It was an easy walk-in touchdown. If the connection had been there, Guyton simply missed him. Take a look. You'll see Rump running clean. The ball, well, actually, it was tipped. Yep, great play by Brian Williams, who's been all over this field. Unofficially, we got him for 10 tackles plus, but he hadn't done anything as important as tipping that ball. That would have been a touchdown. I'm not sure I wouldn't try that again. Up against the play clock, get it off in time. Guyton looking to the air. It is rough to the one. Yeah, this time the coverage was, was actually pretty good. Marcel Swift was in coverage. It was just a well-executed throw and catch. Rump came back to the ball, and the ball was thrown on the money. And Rump pops up limping. Leading receiver for Carson Newman will have to come off at least for a play. And they go two tight ends and Garvani Jackson, the wide out on the left side. Guyton tries to sneak it in and can't. Bearcats trying to indicate a fumble at the bottom of that pile, but Carson Newman ball second and goal. We're in the Division II National Championship third overtime period. 
at Brawley Municipal Stadium in Florence, Alabama. Dave Barnett, Phil Curry, and Don McPherson. Carson Newman led this at it all but one, up 44-29 with 3.51 to go in the fourth quarter. Northwest Missouri State scored 30 points in the fourth quarter to tie it at 44, scoreless in the first two overtime periods. Here comes second and goal for Carson Newman. They indicate touchdown, but the officials don't. I tell you, there's some knockdown, drag out, rock'em, sock'em football going down, going on down there in the pit. If you've never been a lineman on offense or defense, you really don't understand how that feels. You got to bend those exhausted knees and get those quads and those big muscles working and your pads down. This is gut check time. Third and goal from the one again. Antoine Oliver, still no indication. Now there it is, touchdown. Our first points of overtime. Fitting that it would come from Antoine Oliver. 194 yards today. Two touchdowns. He is all man. He just got those pads down behind his big guys, Nick Brown and Henry Lee. And they just wallowed into that end zone. And they're required to go for two here. After the second overtime, you have to go for two. Guyton backs up. Throw on the run is going to be over everybody. But a marker down in the end zone. And it is against Northwest Missouri State. And here's a very interesting statistic. When you're on the three-yard line going for two, you've got a 33% probability of Holding making it. By the defense on an eligible receiver at the distance, first down. Okay. If you move the ball a yard and a half, Dave, with a penalty like this, your odds go up to 67%. So you double your chances of making it if you can get the penalty down to the one and a half yard line. So the odds are very much in Carson Newman's favor of getting this two point conversion. Oliver, that touchdown from the one. What do they do from the two? Guyton, and on the second effort, he gets in. I thought he was stopped at the line. Right, and you think about it. If he had been on the three, that is not a two point conversion. So from the one and a half, things change drastically. So in the third overtime, Carson Newman breaks out with the Oliver touchdown from a yard out and the Guyton determination. The only thing that got him that two-point conversion. First, the touchdown by Antoine Oliver. And Sparks finally on the board in the extra period. Work yet to be done, though. Now, Northwest Missouri State needing a touchdown and a two-point conversion just to stay alive, and they start with Tucker Woolsey up the middle for nothing. Yeah, I think that was a good call. That was a big play for them in their first drive in the first quarter. They were getting their big fullback untracked up the pipe. This time they ran into the teeth of a blitzing defense into the A gap and um, end up second and ten. They'll be spreading it out, throwing it here. I guarantee you. Five wideouts. And it's a home to motion, man. Four wideouts right side. They throw it underneath. Bubble screen for Tony Miles. Bridge back to the 15-yard line, and he's close for the first down. That close. Nice job of blocking by the people out front. He motioned to what is essentially a quad or four wide receivers to one side of the field. He's got three blockers in what is essentially a toss sweep, Dave. It's a bubble screen, but with three blockers out in front. The traditional one that we see a lot from people like Purdue and Florida has two blockers. This is a little different and maybe a little better, but a first down, too. Keep your eye on Miles right there. 
Miles got it on the reverse. Inside the five breaks a tackle. Score. Travis Miles with terrific ball handling because the defense was chasing David Jansen. Tony Miles already had it and was clear around left end. And the reason that corner was so well established for Miles is number 82, Mark Moss, doing a good job of blocking. Oh, man, good job. 82, Moss got his man on the ground. Chris Butler, and if you don't block Chris Butler, he's already shown he knows what to do. Now, can they get the two-point conversion? Miles having a roll back left. Look. Into the end zone, they got it. They got it. Steve Comer. <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. You can go ahead and send out the order for dinner, Dave. <laughs> We're going to be here for a while. It's just not ever going to end, evidently. I'm not sure I ever wanted to. Nobody's dead in this thing. Four hours plus. We go to quadruple overtime. I'm back and I still can't tear up my bobcat. Check out the full line of Bobcat equipment at KC Bobcat, located conveniently in Olathe and Blue Springs. Boy, how much more can they take on that uh, Ken Spark sideline? It has been won and lost and won and lost and tied repeatedly over the last four plus hours. And it is still not done. We go to our fourth overtime, Don McPherson. Well, Dave, as you can imagine, the emotions here are running high and low. It's starting to turn into frustration. Both teams are getting very frustrated with their inability to score. Bearcats start the fourth overtime with David Jansen picking up eight yards. And Ike Curry, the defender, a little bit slow getting up. You know, Tony Miles has now scored three different ways, Bill. 81-yard kickoff return, six catches, 62 yards, and a touchdown. And on that reverse, he's now got himself a rushing touchdown. Well, he's going to have to intercept one. He can't do that unless they put him in on defense. The only other way I know. It. I will. I'd get him out there. Jansen. First down to the 13. Tony Miles, a junior out of Mark, Texas, far and away their leading receiver, but he has also shown that is far and away not the only thing that he does to be a weapon. Touchdown receiving, 48 rushing, rushing yards and a touchdown, and then, of course, the kickoff return, and on a short kick, and those are hard to do. That's the reason you kick the ball short like that is so that a great returner doesn't get on track and run it in the end zone. He comes out wide left on first and 10 from the 13. Ray fake and a roll by Travis Miles. Get into the end zone where J.R. Hill has it in the corner. That's the combination that got them through regulation. They got the touchdown with 10 seconds to go. A very sophisticated and polished offense here with a bootleg, not a naked boot, but with a guard pulling to protect. J.R. Hill down the sideline. He beats the free safety, Montre Ford. And they're in for the touchdown. And once again, they're required to go for two here, as they were in the previous overtime period. Now, Travis Miles is in a pretty long, involved discussion with Bill Horn, the referee. He may be talking about where he wants the ball placed. He's going to call a timeout. Coach Churchman's out on the field. Now he's heading on over to talk to the offensive coordinator, Jim Swoboda. So we'll find out what's happening a little later. Well, presuming we're done by 8 Eastern, 
<laughs> we'll solve the Heisman mystery here on ESPN. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, Kirk Herb Street, John McAvick, all together at the Downtown Athletic Club in New York with Ron Dane, Joe Hamilton, Chad Pennington, Drew Brees, and Michael Vick. Eight Eastern, five Pacific, tonight on ESPN. J.R. Hill's last three catches have all been for touchdowns. He joins the list of uh, people that got Northwest Missouri State to this position when all appeared lost. They were the undefeated national champs by beating Carson Newman in this game a year ago. Carson Newman coming into this one undefeated, ranked first. Bearcats hoping for the repeat. In control at the moment as they figure out what they want to do for the two-point conversion. Yeah, whatever that means, in control. These in controls have lasted about as a second that's, here that's in, been in the most, overtime. That's been the most useless phrase of the last four hours. You're not kidding, because the control does go back and forth in a hurry. And now that the Eagles have seen what Northwest Missouri State has in mind, they call timeout. That's exactly what happened. They waited for Northwest Missouri State to line up the formation that they were going to use for their two-point play, and then they called timeout to plan what they're going to do. So now, Northwest Missouri State, continuing the mind game, will probably change its strategy. Those numbers for Travis Miles, keep in mind, at the half, he was 6 of 14 for 29 yards. Yep. One, of the, uh, one of the best performances under any circumstances you'll ever see in college football, regardless of championship circumstances. That's right. They've come back with incredible courage and execution. You can't just be courageous. You've got to be able to execute the throws and catches, the blocks, runs, and tackles to get back in the game. And then once they took it over and seemed to have it, Carson Newman came back with the same kind of courage and commitment. And there's an old thing in football that coaches love to talk about, and it's called refuse to lose. You've got two teams here that are literally refusing to lose. Last minute substituting for Carson Newman, Cedric Killings. The All-America defensive tackle racing back onto the field. They really want him out there. And they're set to go out of the eye for the two points. Coming after him. And sacked back at the 20-yard line. He never seemed to know that Michael Breadwood was bearing down on him. He was so intent at looking into the end zone for a target, I don't know that he ever saw Breadwood until it was too late. Well, I think he knew he was coming. He was clean because there's nobody to pick up the corner. The quarterback has to account for the corner blitz. It either has to be a hot throw or he has to evade him and do something. What Miles normally does so extremely well, he simply did not get done here. And it's made that, no attempt to, uh, to be uh, evasive at all. That no, was, was strange. And he's so good at it. It looked like he just sort of froze at the switch. And just pure fatigue is setting in here for these young men. Believe me, it's a lot of football. Carson Newman's turn. <laughs> and Oates for three off left tackle. Now, you and I don't care who wins this football game here, Dave, but I want to get this very clear in our viewers' minds. There aren't any losers on this field. Regardless of how this game comes out, everybody wins in a game like this. You'd love for your team to have the most points, but these kids have laid it on the line the way you're supposed to. Again through the middle. And turn back this time is Oates by the linebacker, Greg Bonnet. Yeah, and we've got Greg for 13 tackles. We hadn't said much about Greg, but he's been quietly very active all over this field. Fine inside linebacker, the buck linebacker that lines up on the weak side for the most part from Monroe, Iowa. And they're still sticking down there no matter how tired they are. One can only imagine how tired they've got to be. Third and five in the fourth overtime. Guyton, play fake. 
Hangs one up for Rump and incomplete in the end zone. Last time he was out there, he had to limp off. He may again have to limp off. Tony Warren, number 25, fine red shirt corner, red shirt freshman corner, has come in this game and done a lot of good things. He's been active in coverage. He was right there for that one. And here we are at what we would call yet another moment of truth. Rump, indeed limping, but not off the field. Out to his spot wide right. Last gasp if they don't make it for Carson Newman. Fourth and five. Oh, first down to the 12. Good gracious alive, what a call. I love it. That's not what I would have called, but I would have been wrong. Look at here. Is, is there anybody else in America in that situation who calls running play fourth and five? I don't they know think what they're so. doing. They know that they know Clay Clevenger and Brett Mistak over there on the left side of the offensive line are going to get their job done, and they're still in this football game. Oates now over 100 yards. Oliver drops it. Ball is loose at the 12-yard line. Recovered by Northwest Missouri State, and they win it. have done it back to back. And in a game that featured 110 points, a defensive play decides it. And perhaps not surprisingly, the bane of Carson Newman's offense existence, even though they piled up all the records this year, Nonetheless, they have had problems hanging on to the football. 38 fumbles coming into this game with 21 lost, and it was the fumble that made the difference in the end. But I want to repeat that there is not a loser on either one of these teams. Both of them played their hearts out. It was a great football game. In the midst of all the madness down there somewhere, Don McPherson. Dave, I'm with Coach Mel Churchman. Ch Coach how do you feel right now? Well, just elated. I said we just we won a national championship. It's such a great game, and uh, I said it was going to be a great game all week, and I didn't dream it'd be like this. But our kids have been this, doing this all year, and it's one more time. With little more than a minute to go, you're out of the ball game. All they have to do is squash it. How does it feel when you got that opportunity? Well, you just it just you just respect your coaches and your kids. Our 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 coaches did such a great job of keeping us in it, and our kids did a great job of getting it done. They never died. They they believed they were going to win the whole time. You said it yesterday that you don't have a, a definitive leader. Your whole team are a bunch of leaders. How does it feel for these young men this uh, year? It's great for our seniors. It's just uh, Lord bless them, man. I tell you, they're 15 great kids, and it's just wonderful. Thanks very much, coaching. Thank Congratulations. You, Appreciate it. I want to get they ought to rename this game the Yogi Bowl because this was never over until it was over.